Yo, what is up guys? Dale Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Bringing you another one of my heavyweight prospect videos. And today we will be discussing Tony Yoka. Of course, Tony Yoka is a French heavyweight. He is 27 years old. He is an orthodox fighter and he's listed as 6 foot 7. Tony Yoka was a tremendous amateur. That's the first thing we have to mention here. There are very few heavyweights who turn pro with the amateur credentials that Tony Yoka had. Tony Yoka, of course, won the 2016 Rio Olympics, so he's an Olympic gold medalist. He also won the World Amateur Championships in 2015. He won gold in those games. He was also a bronze medalist in the European Championships and even a gold medalist in the Youth Olympic Games. So Tony Yoka, his amateur pedigree is something else. I know a lot of people will say he was lucky to win gold in Rio 2016, and I would agree. I felt he lost to Hergovic and Joe Joyce in those games, but regardless, he still performed extremely well in the amateurs against the best fighters around, and he beat plenty of world-class amateurs in a legitimate fashion. Don't let the Rio 2016 Olympic Games fool you. This guy genuinely beat some real good fighters, you know? He's beaten the likes of Ivan Dichko. He also beat Joe Joyce before he fought in the Olympics, and I felt Tony Yoka actually won that fight legitimately. He also beat Joseph Parker in the 2010 Youth Olympic Games. So, listen, Tony Yoka has genuinely beat some of the best around in the amateur ranks, and very few fighters can bring that pedigree to the pro game. So, Tony Yoka has that experience behind him already. You know, he's already fought a lot of the best fighters in the world. And as a pro, he is 7-0 with 6 knockouts. And so far, for a guy who's 7-0, he's fought a decent level of competition. But you would expect that from a high-class amateur. You know, he's beaten guys like Michael Wallish, Alexander Dimitrenko, and also tough journeymen like Dave Allen, Jonathan Rice, and Cyril Leonet. So for a 7-0 fighter in the heavyweight division, I think he's being moved quite well. Now, obviously, Tony Yoka turned pro in June 2017. He's only had seven fights in that time. He has been a little inactive, and it has to be said, he did serve a ban for missing three drug tests, I believe. So that is a reason why he's been inactive. And, you know, to a lot of people, that will be a red flag. I have to put that out there, but I certainly think Tony Yoka is a talented fighter. First and foremost, He's got the physical dimensions. Like we said, he's six foot seven with an 82 inch reach. So he's tall and long. He's a proper heavyweight and he's very athletically gifted. He's got good feet for a big man, good coordination. He's got nice hand speed and foot speed. And while you wouldn't call him a huge puncher, he certainly makes up for that with hand speed, accuracy and combinations, you know? I think as Tony Yoka steps through the levels, more of his stoppages will be by accumulation, kind of similar to the Dave Allen stoppage, you know? He never knocked Dave Allen out cold, he slowly dissected him and took him out late on by accumulation. And, you know, as Tony Yoka goes through the ranks, I think that's how he will get his stoppages. As Tony Yoka does rise through the levels, I expect him to kind of revert back to his boxing style from the amateurs, where he was kind of a distance fighter, he would stick and move behind that jab and look for the long right hand, and he would try and maintain range. As a pro so far, he's kind of, you know, been more offensive. Like I said, letting go of combination punches, you know, showing his hand speed, and really putting on opponents, but he can afford to do that against this level of opposition he's fighting right now. But as he steps up, I do expect him to kind of fall back into that boxing style. And if he does, you know, that style is certainly interesting in the division. He's got a good boxing brain. Like I said, he does the basics well. And, you know, that in itself, combined with his physical advantages, I do believe Tony Yoka can go a fair way in the heavyweight division. That's not to say he's perfect. Sometimes, you know, he does have lapses in concentration. Sometimes he'll fight, not with his hands down, but his hands are kind of low and he's open for counter shots. He'll back up in straight lines with his hands down, chin in the air, things like that. Certain things he needs to tidy up on defensively, to be honest with you, as he goes through the levels. But providing he can make the necessary defensive adjustments 
and iron out the deficiencies in his game. I think, you know, Tony Oka stands in good stead to be a viable heavyweight contender. Whether he can win a title or not, or anything like that, remains to be seen. But, you know, Tony Yoka is certainly one of the more well-known prospects in the heavyweight division. And I would say he's actually one of the better prospects in the heavyweight division, to be quite honest. And also, going forwards, like I mentioned earlier, I would like to see Tony Yoka a bit more active, to be quite honest. And I want to see Tony Yoka now start stepping up in competition. You know, this guy did have an extremely vast amateur background, so I don't really feel the need for his handlers to babysit the guy and match him softly. In fact, going forwards, I would like to see Tony Yoka maybe fight somebody like Johan Duharpus next. I think that fight would make a lot of sense. First and foremost, Duharpus, a tall, big, strong guy who's got experience. He's French as well, so in France, I'm assuming that fight would do quite well. A battle of two French heavyweights. I think that would be a good test for Tony Yoka. And, you know, providing Tony Yoka can get through that fight, maybe after that he could fight somebody like Carlos Takam, again, another heavyweight based in France. So believe it or not, Tony Yoka actually has a couple of guys that he could clear out in France. And like I say, I'm sure those fights would do fairly well in France. Tony Yoka is a bit of a name down there, understandably, after being an Olympic gold medalist. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, share your thoughts below. What do you make of Tony Yoka? Do you rate him that highly? I think he's a solid prospect. I wouldn't put him in like a top three list of heavyweight prospects. But he's certainly in the upper echelons of any prospect list. That's what I would say. Good fighter, good talent. Share your thoughts below. Peace.